and welcome to The View from the IMF. This year, world leaders are meeting in Washington and um, a lot to talk about, especially in Europe. And because of that, I am meeting with Yves LeMay, the head of Europe, Middle East and Africa for Sovereign Risk at Moody's. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for making it. Good morning. Good morning. Well, Eve, let's focus on Spain first. Mm -hmm. um, a lot going on there. It seems like it's slightly slipping into a constitutional crisis. Mm -hmm. What is that going to mean for Spain and the country's economy? Yeah, well, from, from our perspective, I think the, the baseline scenario, the base case scenario is that while it's difficult to, um, to see how the situation will resolve itself, uh, our base case is still Catalonia to, be, to remain part of, uh, of, of Spain. Mm -hmm. But to the extent that you have a protracted situation, uh, the political uncertainty will inevitably have spillover effect on uh, the economy by affecting business confidence mm -hmm. and, and, and ultimately growth and that uh, puts additional potentially additional pressure on the fiscal position of, uh, of the government. Mm. Well what would you say could Catalonia actually be an economically viable state? Mm -hmm. Well, Catalonia is uh, contribution to, to the Spanish GDP is, is roughly about 25%. It's wealthier than the average in, in, in Spain. Um, but uh, leaving Spain uh, would likely uh, trigger significant economic shocks. Mm -hmm. um, leaving Spain means leaving the EU. What happens to uh, the trade relationship uh, that the region currently benefits? first with the rest of Spain and the rest of Europe. So plenty mm. of economic shocks uh, to be expected in the unlikely event that uh, the secessions were to happen. Mm. If we're moving on to another issue, the UK, Brexit is obviously another issue to talk about. Uh, more and more people expect Brexit to actually be um, coming to a no deal scenario. Now, what's your assessment of this issue for the UK and how important is it for European leaders to actually uh, strive for a deal? Um, because what, what impact would it have on their economies? Well, uh, on, on the, uh, the Brexit and, and the likely outcome, our expectation now is that um, the UK and uh, the 27 other uh, member countries uh, are likely to uh, end up negotiating a deal, but uh, a deal that would be much narrower than what we had anticipated uh, a year ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, a, a deal that is likely to focus primarily on goods, little on services. And services is a very important part of the UK economy and the EU mm -hmm. is a very important uh, export market for UK services. Yeah. So what we take from that is that the economic prospects of, uh, of the UK for the next several years uh, will likely be much weaker. Uh, than what we had assumed a year ago at the beginning of, uh, of the process, if you will. Uh, and that was one of the reasons we lowered uh, the rating of the UK mm -hmm. just a few weeks ago to AA2 from AA1. Yeah. Lastly, if we mm -hmm. talk about Italy, slightly mm -hmm. different issue here. We've got the banking sector being the main mm -hmm. troublemaker mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. high non-performing loans still. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see the impact of that on the Italian economy going forward? Mm -hmm. well, that's a very good question. Actually, uh, we, uh, we announced a decision uh, just last week uh, in terms of affirming the rating of Italy at BAA2, uh, partly on the basis that we see um, the risk of a systemic crisis within the banking system as uh, much lower today than it was a, a year ago mm -hmm. uh, when we assigned a negative outlook to the uh, BAA2 uh, rating. So having said that, the banking system is still weak. Uh, if you look at problem loans ratios, it is about three times what you see in the rest of the uh, EU at around 16%. Yeah. With the recovery, we do anticipate some slight easing of uh, an improvement of, uh, of asset quality, but it's a long, 
process and it will take several years before this can be fully addressed. Mm. And the ECB has only just come out with this new plan mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. um, well, NPL coverage being higher mm -hmm. uh, from 2018. And mm -hmm. it, what, it, what's, gonna, what's your view on this? Because some people are saying, especially in Italy, this could mm -hmm. mean that even more lenders might falter. Well, I mean, provisioning per se against uh, 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 bad loans is, is, a, is a credit positive. Uh, it's just a question of how, how do you get there? How do you uh, increase the level of provisioning against the loan? So there has to be uh, a, a pace mm -hmm. and uh, that takes into account what can be achieved uh, uh, reasonably within uh, a certain time frame. Mm. Yves Lemay, thank you very much. Thank you.